Well, we would like to thank you for opportunity today to um, share this presentation about helicopter altitude control. And as we thought of what project we wanted to uh, present, or I guess develop first, um, I remembered my days um, in years past, every Christmas wanting a helicopter for Christmas. And every year my parents would get me a cheap $20 helicopter from Walmart. And I was really good at controlling this helicopter. Um, that is, until I let my siblings drive the helicopter in which they would crash it into the Christmas tree or the roof and within a week my helicopter would be broken. And we thought a solution to this problem would be to develop a real life application for an altitude controller for helicopters in which you would set a set point and it wouldn't exceed that set point. It would have limited overshoot. And the goal of our presentation was to develop a helicopter um, with this altitude controller built in. So the first step in accomplishing this task was to create a dynamic model. Um, since helicopter flight is pretty complex, we wanted to keep our model simple for the, for the purposes of this project. And so we decided that we wouldn't take into account any disturbances like wind or weather, and that, um, for example, the density of air wouldn't change with temperature or elevation. And also, we were only going to model in the vertical direction. So the first step in this in developing this model was finding a way to relate rotations per minute of the rotor to the force of lift. Um, having that and taking into account the force of drag and the effects of gravity, we were able to relate those to velocity and the velocity to the height. Combining that all together, we were able to get a good transfer function that when you input RPMs, you could get out a certain climb from your helicopter. With that transfer function, set up, we were able to simulate the helicopter in Simulink and to do this it required a cascading control loop um, which basically means there's a loop inside of another loop and the outside loop is the loop that contains the controller it is what helps us get to the height from the RPMs. The inner loop however is the loop that simulates the engine the engine's ability to follow the RPM set point. And it's important to note that the inner loop must be faster than the outer loop or else you'll never converge to a height. And from that we were able to tune our controllers and get great results. Now, <coughs> when, we when we made our simulation we found that the, um, I guess the uncontrolled flight the response time was very slow, on around 500 seconds just to meet the rise time, which was way too slow for what we wanted. And so uh, putting on a PD controller, we were able to make that much more aggressive and get to track our set points much better. Um, one of our concerns was to have no overshoot, but having no overshoot with an aggressive controller is a bit difficult, so we were able to minimize that. And we were actually very satisfied with our only 4% of overshoot. As you can see, we were able to track and follow the set point changes very good. So, in conclusion, um, we were able to meet the objective of our project in developing this controller. And we were able to develop a controller that was designed for a safe and enjoyable ride. Um, the average velocity that was re um, reached throughout the climbing the different set points was about 3 meters per second. Um, and, of course, in perhaps an emergency application, you would want to go a little bit faster than that in order to save lives. Um, as you saw in the previous slide, it um, met the set points accurately, quickly, and without much overshoot. Um, our only recommendations in moving forward with the project um, would be to uh, make sure to tune your parameters according to um, your specific application. For example, if you had a heavier um, helicopter, you would need to adapt for that helicopter if the rotors were um, a bit longer than our average rotor length. Um, that would also change the parameters. Um, the last two recommendations we have are um, just in landing to um, set your set point um, perhaps a few meters above the ground. That way the um, overshoot will be negligible and you'll be able to just go into manual to land the helicopter and lastly to take any other disturbances such as wind and rain into consideration. Um, other than that, get ready to fly and I guess we would like to thank you for
coming to our presentation and open the floor up for any questions. Thank you.